Picture this, a furry, whiskered creature lounging on its back in the waves, casually munching on crabs. Sounds cute, right? Well, these adorable sea otters are secretly saving California's coastline from destruction. And if that's not mind-bending enough for you, wait till you hear about the wind turbines that don't move. Yep, you heard that right, motionless wind turbines. Buckle up, science nerds and nature lovers, because we're about to dive into a world where the impossible becomes possible, and the cutest animals might just be our planet's unexpected heroes. Hey there, you brilliant bundles of curiosity. Theodore here, ready to blow your minds with another episode of Eco Innovations that'll make you go whoa. Today we're diving deep into the world of unexpected environmental heroes and mind-bending clean energy tech. We've got two incredible stories that'll make you rethink everything you thought you knew about saving our planet. First up, the tale of how sea otters, yes, those adorable floating fluff balls, are single-handedly, or should I say single-podly, rescuing California's coastline. And just when you think you've heard it all, we'll explore the silent revolution in wind energy that's turning the industry on its head. Motionless wind turbines, people. It's like the universe is playing a practical joke on physics, and I am here for it. So strap in, eco-warriors and tech enthusiasts. We're about to embark on a journey that proves once again that when it comes to saving our planet, Reality is often stranger and more amazing than fiction. Let's dive in. Okay, so you know that feeling, right? When it's just like eco-anxiety overload from the news? Yeah, it could be a lot. For this deep dive though, we're switching gears, focusing on good news and sustainability from 2024. Love it. Got to celebrate those wins, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially in a field like sustainability. Exactly. We've got turtle comebacks, clean energy milestones, even some surprise animal heroes. Get ready to be inspired. I'm all ears. Hit me with some good news. Let's start with those green and loggerhead turtles in Cyprus. Nesting numbers up almost 25% this year. Wow, that's significant. What's behind that turnaround? Turns out they got serious about enforcing no beach parties during nesting season, and it's working. Shows you the power of strong conservation policies when they're actually enforced. Right. But it's not just about rules. They did a big public awareness push, too. Really got people on board with protecting the turtles. Smart move. Gets everyone invested in the solution. Exactly. Okay, but hold on. Because Cyprus isn't the only success story. Mm -hmm. Over in the Galapagos, scientists think they found a smooth hammerhead shark nursery. No way. Smooth hammerheads are vulnerable. Right? right. Finding a breeding ground is huge GE for their conservation. Absolutely. Give scientists a chance to study their behavior, figure out better ways to protect them. This is exciting stuff. See, I told you. Good news all around. Okay, ready for a change of scenery? Let's head to the California coast. Sounds good to me. What's happening on the coast? Well, it involves collapsing marshlands and get this, sea otters. Okay, I'm intrigued. Sea otters are a keystone species, right? Yeah. Huge impact on their environment. Exactly. And these guys, they love crabs. Ah, so I'm guessing the crabs were part of the marshland problem. Big time. They were munching on the roots of these important grasses, leading to erosion, habitat loss, the whole nine yards. And the sea otters, being the crab-loving heroes they are, came in and said, not on our watch. <laughs> Seriously, though, with the otters back in the picture, the crab population is in check. The marshes are recovering. It's a perfect example of how nature can often solve these problems if we just give it a chance. All right, let's break this down for a second. Porque science is cool, but can be a bit much. So imagine marshlands as nature's sponge, soaking up excess water and protecting our coasts. But these grasses have a nemesis, crabs. These little pinchy guys munch on the grass roots like they're at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Enter our fluffy heroes, the sea otters. They swoop in, gobble up the crabs, and suddenly our marshland grasses are thriving again. It's like a medieval tale, but with more whiskers and less armor. Who knew saving the planet could be this adorable? Trophic cascade. That's what they call it, right? Uh. One species being reintroduced and having this ripple effect throughout the ecosystem. Love it. It's pretty amazing. Okay, ready to switch gears again. This time we're talking clean energy, specifically solar power. 
All right, let's talk solar. I know there have been some huge advancements lately. What have you got? It's officially a major player in the global energy scene. Like, solar now makes up 20% of the global electricity mix. Major. Wow, 20%. That's huge. Didn't realize it was that high already. Right. And get this, in April, Portugal got a whopping 95% of its electricity from renewables. Seriously, yeah, 95%. Yeah. That's incredible. I knew Portugal was doing well with renewables, but that's next level. Mostly solar and wind, too. It's like the future of energy is here. It really feels that way, and it's about time. Yeah. What's driving this rapid change, do you think? Is it policy changes? Yeah. Technology getting better? It's a bit of everything, really. The cost of solar panels and wind turbines has plummeted for one. Plus, we have much better ways of storing energy now, more efficient batteries and such. And of course, governments are finally starting to enact policies that support renewables, which makes a huge difference. It really does. It's encouraging to see this kind of progress. Gives me that hope. Too. Makes you wonder what other amazing clean energy solutions are just around the corner, you know? I know, right? It's exciting to think about. Yeah. But it's not just big technology. It's about people taking action, too. Absolutely. Remember we talked about those folks in Spain pushing for eco-friendly cemeteries? That's just one example. People are stepping up and demanding change everywhere. Yeah. Citizen-led initiatives are gaining serious traction globally. Like, folks are tired of waiting around for someone else to fix things. They're taking matters into their own hands. Totally. Like over in the EU, they just made it illegal to do some of the worst kinds of environmental damage. Oh, yeah. That was big news. Criminalizing ecosystem destruction. Mm. Finally. Right. It all stemmed from public outcry over deforestation, the illegal wildlife trade, all that. Shows you how much people care about this stuff. People are finally connecting the dots, realizing that trashing the planet isn't just bad for the environment, but for us too. 100%. Like mm -hmm. We need those forests for clean air and water, those mm -hmm. oceans for... Well, pretty much everything. Exactly. And policymakers are starting to get it, too. Yeah. They're seeing that climate change, biodiversity loss, food security, mm. it's all connected. Totally. It's all part of the same big, messy, beautiful web of life. Speaking of connections, have you heard about this circular bioeconomy thing? Oh, yeah. The circular bioeconomy. It's actually a pretty simple idea when you break it down. Lay it on me. Okay, so imagine a world where instead of just digging stuff up, using it and tossing it out, we create a closed loop system. So less of a one-way street, more like a... Roundabout, yeah. We minimize waste, reuse resources, and work with natural processes instead of against them. Okay, that makes sense. Sounds way better than the take-make-waste system we've got going on now. Right, and it touches everything. Take that plastic bottle in front of you. In a linear economy, it's trash after you're done with it. But in a circular bioeconomy, it's made from plants, designed to be taken apart and then either recycled into a new bottle or biodegrade safely. Now that's what I'm talking about. But how do we actually get there? Seems kind of pie in the sky. It's ambitious, sure, but not possible. A recent study laid out five key things we need to focus on. New technologies, smart regulations, market forces, raising public awareness, and making sure it's socially equitable. Five things. Okay, okay, break that down for me. Sure. So, first up, tech. We need to keep investing in research and development, make those clean technologies cheaper and more accessible for everyone. Gotcha. Make it easier and cheaper to go green. What about the regulations part? So that's things like putting a price on carbon emissions or creating cap-and-trade systems, makes polluting more expensive and rewards the innovators. Right, right. Hit them where it hurts their wallets. But even with all the right tech and policies in place, don't we still need to, you know, convince people that this is important? Absolutely. Public awareness is huge E. The more people understand the benefits, less pollution, less waste, more green jobs, the more they'll demand sustainable products. Consumer choices have power. So true. Speaking of which, did you hear about that Australian bank? They just said no more to financing new fossil fuel projects. Oh, yeah. That was a big one. When financial giants like that start pulling out of fossil fuels, it sends a powerful message. It's like, hey, the future is renewable and we're putting our money where our mouth is. Exactly. It's like a domino effect. One big player makes a move and others start to follow suit. Precisely. Yeah. And speaking of innovation, there's this other story I think you'll find interesting. Have you heard about what they're doing with an old mine in Finland? An old mine? Finland? Fill me in. They're turning it into a giant battery. Wait, seriously? <laughs> like, the whole mine is a battery? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's a really cool concept called a gravity battery. Basically, they use extra renewable energy, you know, from wind or solar when it's super sunny or windy, to lift these massive weights up a mine shaft. 
Hold on. So they're using gravity to store energy? That's wild. I know, right? And then when they need that energy back, they just release the weights. As the weights fall, they drive a generator, creating electricity. Wow. That's brilliant. And so simple. Why haven't we been doing this all along? Sometimes the simplest solutions are the best ones, right? Mm. It's just a matter of thinking outside the box. And what I love about this is that it's efficient, environmentally friendly, and it relies on things we already have, old minds and gravity. It gives me so much hope. We really can innovate our way to a brighter future. I think so, too. And it's not just about the big technological leaps. It's about the everyday choices we all make, whether it's opting for a reusable water bottle, supporting sustainable businesses, or simply talking to our friends and family about these issues. Every little bit counts. Absolutely. It all adds up. And that's what gives me hope, that collective action, that shared commitment to something bigger than ourselves. We're that's all in right. this together, right? It really makes you think about what other creative solutions are out there, just waiting to be discovered. Right. Like, what if we're only scratching the surface of what's possible? Exactly. And speaking of outside-the-box thinking, get this. They're installing something called motionless wind turbines in the UK now. Motionless. Okay, now I'm really curious. How do those even work? I know, it sounds kind of crazy, Ray, but, but it's based on this cool science called piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity. Okay, vaguely rings a bell. Refresh my memory. So basically, certain materials, when they vibrate, like, from the wind, they actually generate an electric charge. Oh, right. I remember learning about that in school. Yeah. So these turbines, instead of those giant blades, they just, what, harness the wind's vibration? Exactly. Pretty neat, huh? That's amazing. No giant blades whirling around, much quieter. You could put those anywhere. Right. Cities, rooftops, you name it. No more worries about disturbing people or wildlife. Okay, hold on to your hats, because this is where it gets wild. These new turbines are like the introverts of the wind energy world. They get the job done without all the fuss and noise. Instead of those giant swooshing blades, they use something called piezoelectricity. Fancy word I know, but here's the gist. When the wind blows, it makes these special materials vibrate, and those vibrations create electricity. It's like if you could power your house by gently tapping on a magic crystal. No spinning, no whooshing, just quiet, efficient energy production. Mind blown. Talk about adapting clean energy for different environments. That's brilliant. Right. It's like the innovation just keeps on coming. And hold on, because wind and solar power just hit another huge milestone in the EU. Oh, I think I know what you're going to say. <sighs> Weren't they on track to get more power from wind and solar than fossil fuels? Yep. For the first half of the year, wind and solar actually generated more electricity than fossil fuels in the EU. Isn't that incredible? That's a game changer. It really feels like there's no turning back now. The clean energy revolution is here. Let's put this in perspective, shall we? The EU generating more power from wind and solar than fossil fuels is like your veggie-hating friend suddenly preferring broccoli over burgers. It's a massive shift, people. We're talking about an entire continent saying, you know what? We're going to power our Netflix binges and our electric toothbrushes with sunshine and breeze. It's not just good news. It's a full-on energy revolution. And the best part, it's happening right now, not in some far-off sci-fi future. How's that for a plot twist in humanity's story? It really does, doesn't it? But, you know, it's not just about the big technological advancements. Sometimes it's about individuals taking a stand, making their voices heard. So true. Remember those nuns we talked about, the ones in Kansas? Using their influence to push for corporate accountability. Love that story. Me too. They're proof that you don't have to be a CEO or a politician to make a difference. Right. Everyone has a role to play. Yeah. Speaking of making a difference, remember those Iberian lynx, the ones on the brink of extinction? Oh, yeah. They were in dire straits. Weren't they down to just a few individuals in the wild? They were. But thanks to major conservation efforts, they've made an incredible comeback. Their status has been upgraded from endangered to threatened. That is fantastic news. It's amazing how resilient nature can be when we give it a fighting chance. It's true. And you know, it's not just happening with the Iberian lynx. There are so many other stories of people going above and beyond for animals. Remember that wildlife center in Virginia that dressed up as a mama fox to raise an orphan cub? Oh my gosh, yes. Talk about above and beyond, right? Those stories just warm your heart. 
It's a good reminder that every act of compassion, no matter how small, makes a difference. It really does. And speaking of compassion making a difference, there's been some really interesting stuff happening in the fashion world, which, let's be honest, hasn't always had the best track record with sustainability. I know, right? For a while there, it seemed like fast fashion was going to be the death of us all. But things are starting to shift. They really are. More and more. Consumers are demanding clothes that are both ethically and sustainably made, and brands are finally starting to listen. We're seeing amazing innovations like clothing made from recycled materials, natural dyes, made from things like avocado pits and onion peels. Seriously, avocado pits and onion peels. That's yeah. wild. It is. Who knew you could make such vibrant colors from food waste? I know, right? It's amazing what people can do when they put their minds to it. It really is. You know, after diving into all these positive developments, one thing's clear. A more eco-conscious world isn't just a pipe dream. It's becoming a reality. It absolutely is. We've yeah. come a long way, but there's still so much more to do, you know. Totally. But as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm feeling incredibly hopeful. All these stories, from those motionless wind turbines to the comeback of the Iberian lynx, they're proof that change is possible. 100%. It all starts with us. Each and every one of us has the power to make a difference through our everyday choices. So true. Whether it's reducing our own environmental footprint, supporting sustainable businesses, or speaking out about the issues that matter to us, every little action counts. It all adds up. So until next time, let's all keep learning, keep innovating, and keep fighting for a brighter, greener future together. Here, here. And remember, there's always hope, always progress, and always something worth fighting for. Thanks for joining us. There you have it, folks. Proof that reality is often wilder than our imaginations. From sea otters moonlighting as coastal saviors to wind turbines that generate power without so much as a twirl, we're living in an age of eco-miracles. So the next time someone tells you that saving the planet is impossible, just remind them that we've got crab-munching otters and silent wind catchers on our side. If that doesn't scream, anything is possible, I don't know what does. Remember, whether you're a science geek, a nature lover, or just someone who enjoys a good wait what moment, there's a role for you in this grand adventure we call environmental conservation. So keep your eyes open, your mind curious, and who knows, maybe you'll stumble upon the next big eco-innovation. Until next time, this is Theodore, signing off and reminding you that in the game of saving the planet, the most unexpected players often turn out to be the MVPs. Stay curious, stay hopeful, and keep being awesome.